Hi. Just me today. <laughs> hey, welcome back to our stupid reactions of Corbin. There's no one else here because it's just me. Uh, and you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, more juicy content. Thanks to everybody who supports us on Patreon. Follow us on Twitter account. Subscribe if you haven't hit the like button. Chugging down that juicy content for you right there. And today we're doing a movie review. Insert Rick going, because that's what he does. And we're doing a movie review of 2018, the 2023 uh, Malayalam drama thriller about the um, floods, the 2018 Kerala floods, uh, directed by Jude Anthony Joseph. And if you're wondering, hey, uh, why is it just your uh, beautiful, sexy face on screen? One, you're welcome. Two, uh, there was Rick was we were both going to the theater and uh, through different circumstances, Rick ended up being over 30 minutes late. Um, uh, and after the film had already started, uh, and so he was like, uh, that's not fair to the film for me to come in 30 minutes late. Um, and so we, I went in and, uh, it basically, he doesn't, there's two other things. He doesn't have time this week cause there's only one showing and it's far away. And so basically it's just going to be me. He'll catch it on streaming. Um, but it'll just be me here today so sorry and or you're welcome however you want to view that but we're doing a movie review and it'll be a uh spoiler review because there's it just came out here in the united states but it's been out for a couple weeks and there's other non-spoiler review reviews that will probably be better for you um but i'll get into uh the stuff i liked the stuff i didn't like how i felt overall i liked the film i enjoyed the film uh, I didn't love the film. There were issues I had with it and stuff that I thought uh, could have been better. But there's also stuff that I really appreciated about the film and I really want to talk about because uh, it's quite miraculous, some of the stuff that this uh, film did. Um, but uh, first and foremost, I want to talk about the freaking, the freaking set design of this film is incredible. Like, I, at, at times, I was like, did you guys at the time find a flooded area and film in it? I was like, that can't be what's happening, right? And then I did some research. Obviously, I think they built an entire small little village and flooded it uh, to recreate uh, a, a lot of the, the stuff. And it was, I love practical effects. So the hats off to the um, production design team. It's through the roof. There was very few times, and I know this. The budget of this film was like something in the United States dollars, like four million dollars or, or twenty crores or something like that. For a disaster movie, is insane to pull off what they did and make it not look a garbage, uh, for lack of a better word. Um, because it looked great. There was very few instances outside of maybe the helicopter flying at times. Uh, where you could see VFX. So wh where the the practical and the VFX merged on like at least the sets and the rain and a lot of the, the, the storms and stuff like that, superb. I thought they did a phenomenal job in this film uh, in that aspect. I really, that's a, one of the first things I wanted to, to point out. Um, the other uh, stuff I wanted to point out is is some of the performances. Uh, Tavino Thomas obviously is is probably your main lead in this film, and I love Tavino Thomas. I I, I think he's gonna have his trajectory is just going like freaking this with Manominari, this and now uh, Arm, right? That's that's coming out. Um, he did a a very good job. Um, with his character, he probably had the most fleshed out character. And that's one of the, the issues that I, that I did have with the film, um, was there, there's, there's, there's so much that they were trying to put into this film of true stories that happened or, or stuff they wanted to put. And I think it got a, a little kerbobbled, 
for lack of a better word, uh, for a little while. Um, but his and, and a lot of a lot of characters got completely fleshed out. Um, but his character is one that I think was the most fleshed out, and I did I did appreciate that. I enjoyed his performance in this. Um, I thought he did a very good job. Um, and I, I thought the two songs were really nice as well. And there were some really good moments in this. Uh, before I get into s some of the other stuff that I I didn't ap uh, appreciate as much or as I had some issues with. There were some, uh, like, the moment that probably touched me the most in this, because I, I think this movie means, would mean so much more to a Malayali, right? Uh, or what have you call yourselves and people from Kerala, right? Uh, because you went through this. It's like if somebody in the United States from New Orleans, uh, when they went through Katrina and they lit, it was a devastating hurricane. It would mean a lot more to them. Obviously, as a United States citizen, it, it meant a lot to everybody. And I was in San Antonio, Texas, which wasn't too far from uh, New Orleans. But uh, so we got a lot of refugees from them, kind of like uh, the, the Tamil uh, characters in this. But um, it means I could see it meaning so much to so many people to see this story told and then to relive the the heartbreak and the the, t the, the terrible events that happened, but also the beautiful overcoming with with um, people, you know, coming together for the better of humanity. And, and that's, that's one of the beautiful things about disaster movies, right, is uh, we can all come together as a species, which we normally can't ever, uh, which is one of the things a lot of people like about disaster movies. Um, and the fact that this isn't just a normal disaster movie like Day After Tomorrow. This is something real that happened. And so I realized they wanted to... Um, get a lot in there but one story I did appreciate was when and maybe it's just because I'm a dad now the the dad with the the kid with either autism down syndrome or whatever he had um that that whole sequence of trying to get out of the house and the dad trying to do everything in his power to protect his family and get them out and to the last breath holding up not only his son but his wife it, that part really touched me. I might just once again might be just because of where I am in my life right now. That part really touched me. I really, I really like the part. Also, there was a bunch of other parts of like when people came together um, and uh, you know, it, the, weirdly the the part of when you know the WhatsApp went out and then people showed up to help. And I was like, because I I know that's true. And I was like, that's beautiful. The people that actually came uh, to to help when people were in need. That was beautiful. I, I really enjoyed that. Um, don't take uh, CPR advice from uh, Tavino Thomas. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> Not good at all. Um, also, even though he's a soldier, he doesn't know how to, you know, focus on his stuck foot. Which, you, instead of, you know, trying to swim up, he should, you know, try to adjust his foot there a little bit uh, at the end. Um, <laughs> but, you know, that's that's nitpicking um, at, at that point. And then uh, there w I've seen some people comment because I, I watched some reviews to, to get to a feel of what other people were saying. And they, some people felt it was emotionally manipulative at, at, in certain moments and. I don't know that I felt that. I could feel that uh, there was definitely overscoring in this film for sure. Not throughout, but a lot of it, especially in the big emotional moments where they want to. I could see that. Um, but that that wasn't one of my biggest gripes. The, there was, I could see where at times, even though like I'm, I know a lot of these stories, like the pregnant lady, like there was a pregnant lady evacuated, and I, I did some research, and I saw that a lot of these stories came from real stories, right? But the way sometimes they write it in certain films, in this film in, in, in particular, the way they write certain things can make it feel, even though we know it's real, kind of uh, fabricated, uh, even though it is real. Um, the, if people say cheesy dialogue or if they do cheesy things, it's like that feels cinematic as opposed to, you know, real. And so I could see that in, in a lot of places in this film. Uh, it definitely got better in the second half uh, of this film. Uh, the first half, there was, there was 
And I'm getting into some of the the parts that I didn't like, and I'm sure there's some that you guys probably will know that I will not like about this film. But uh, the dubbing was terrible, um, especially in the first half. And I know the film's budget was like, once again, $4 million. And so I think they put their money in the right place in terms of practical effects. And and so I get that. But I do have to point out that there's other films that I've seen, especially in the modeling industry, that either do it with sync sound hopefully um or just do dubbing better because it, it wasn't the best dubbing job that i've seen in a film for sure um this film was very formulaic in terms of you knew what was going to happen uh, and how it was going to unfold in terms of like the dad uh the son not liking the fishing you knew he was probably going to become a fisherman um the uh, <laughs> there's there's also other elements of like a, a cobra just popping up on uh, something he needed to get. Once again, even if it is true, it just and I I just doubt it at that moment that that was true. Maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? And you can tell me. That just feels weird to put like the stakes were already high. You didn't need to put a cobra, you know. Um... <laughs> Uh, and so, yeah, in, in there's elements of in, in that, that that will take you out of it at times. Um, the rain looked great. Uh, the, the, oh, God. The fucking... And you know it's coming. The white actors. And I pirated a bit for this uh, video to uh, take video and show Rick. So he could see what he missed. In terms of that, it was some of the worst that I've seen. And we've seen a lot of really bad white actors in Indian cinema. You guys know this. Uh, and it it was also the bad dubbing. It, they, it was even worse on them. But, God, they were awful. And I don't know why you even needed them. I don't. Uh, one, the, the characters. I don't know why you needed the characters. Or two, I don't know why you need those actors. If you're gonna, if that's gonna be the white people representation in Indian films, just use like sex dolls because they're probably gonna be a better performer than what you normally get outside of Mark the Goat White Bennington. Um, <laughs> but like they're they're, I didn't understand their plot. If they were supposed to be a comic relief, I was like, I don't even know why we need a comic relief here. Okay, this is a serious story. Take these awful people away. Um, that that was by far the worst part of the entire film. It was awful. Uh, luckily, they weren't in it forever, but they were in it definitely too much. I agree uh, there with myself. Um, <laughs> let's see. What else? Um, oh, yeah. Like I said, at, at first, because it was a lot of the setup and it was a lot of dubbing errors and there was too I think there were too many characters in this. I think they definitely could have cut down on a lot of characters and focused on a few characters stories to drive us through to to get us even more emotionally connected to these certain characters like we did to Tavino Thomas. Um, I think you could have cut out a lot of people. You could have also added I've seen other people say this some female characters like female characters were almost non-existent like in terms of meaty female characters um, in this. So they definitely could have added some there and taken away from other people. Uh, I liked the dad, the the, the dad who, who once, or once again, this is spoilers, dad who died uh, in it. I, I liked that actor. I liked that relationship uh, a lot. Um, and like I said, there was stuff I, I, I enjoyed in this film. Uh, there was stuff I, I didn't so much enjoy, but I can easily, but I overall enjoyed it, but I can easily see why this is getting so much love right now, especially from people from people in Kerala that, that experienced this. I could feel the heart of this film while I was watching it, and I could I could feel there were a few people in the theater. The, the later showing, the 9 p.m. showing, which is way past my bedtime, you know, um, is almost packed. And so this film is doing great, and that's wonderful. And I love that, especially for the Malayam industry, who, um, you know, it's harder for them to get this broader appeal and broader distribution. We didn't get this film until two weeks later. Um, so I'm so happy that it's, it's doing well. Um, I just wish maybe it was 
kind of edited a little better together, maybe cut out some of the fat in terms of the a uh, couple of the side stories and stuff like that. Um, but overall, I enjoyed it. I definitely have a lot more to like than I than I had to dislike, for sure. Um, and I'm glad I got to see it on the big screen because I think that added to the impact that 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 it had on me. But uh, you guys, let me know what you thought about this film. Uh, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, uh, thoughts on what I said. Uh, and if you were, if you went through this, if you were from Carolyn, you actually went through this. Please, uh, please let me know down in the comments below. I would uh, love to hear your story because um, I, I do. Even though I hate people, I love stories about humanity coming together um because that's when people are at their best usually um when they're trying to help each other right uh so i i i love that so let me know what you thought about this film and i'll wish we our next malayalam film down below <laughs>